Alrighty, looks like we're back with uh, a little bit of an insider edition here we got going on, Josh. We're yeah, PSS After Hour crew over here talking about Skinwalker Ranch because we just got back. And, uh, it, well, it's been quite a bit since we've been back, but we... I was about to say, dude, I was like, we've been back. Yeah, and well, sometimes I'm still in that mindset of, ah, oh, we're... We went to Skinwalker Ranch. We just got back, but it's really, it's been quite a while. But with that, we have so much information that we just want to release. And oh yeah, just load off on you guys. Oh, yeah, I'm, we I'm just waiting can't for wait. it. And it's it's so it exciting. Is. But it we have this insider edition because I was talking to Rod earlier, and we wanted to talk about what we each went through because we all had those individual experiences at Skinwalker Ranch that right. were different. I would say. Oh yeah. Like definitely. Because one of my favorite things was when we first got there, that it was it was it, it almost felt surreal, right? Because you drove it with LT, right? And then, <laughs> yeah. Which how was that? Was that a fun experience driving with Dude, a highway I patrol? Dude, I swear to God, every cop we passed by, you wanted to stop and say hi. No, I'm just kidding. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you ain't talking about. We ain't got time for that. Huh? We ain't got time, old man. I'm talking about. I drove up this road 20 years. Yeah, right. I'm just playing. Now we had a good old time. LT was cracking up jokes the entire time. We're rocking out to Limp Bizkit. Mm -hmm. You know, with Suck 99. You know how that went. Oh, it's a whole new topic. Oh, we'll dabble we'll in later. Well, we'll have to dive into that later. Uh, deep dive, deep dive. Um, but yeah, no, it was a good ride with LT. We cracked up a lot of jokes. We passed through Duchesne and all that where he said he did a lot of his patrolling. So there's just a lot of beat roll through there and just having a good time, just jamming out to some good old rock. Really? Yeah. That was, we didn't have the best of times. Brayden kind of sabotaged us and <laughs> because it was Braden, it was Braden driving, uh, Rod, was in the front seat me and stuff in the back and we're driving this little old, tiny car and Braden's not a very uh, tiny person <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> we're driving through and he decides that he wanted to rip a rip a good one proper sheet clapper mm -hmm. and uh also child blocked the windows so we couldn't roll it down so that was we kind of got gassed out but other than that <laughs> uh, once the smell kind of resided it was it was it was pretty good it was a long drive but you know, yeah, Brayden doesn't eat too healthy. It was, yeah, it was well then at least because it was it was basically a quarter pounder with cheese that I was smelling. So um, <laughs> and because we had just stopped at McDonald's, but ready. we we'd gotten there uh, and I it was surreal when we first showed up because we're like, damn, we're, we're actually we talked about doing this and we're here and it yeah, was kind of a skinwalker ranch, right? It was a weird thing to get used to, but when we finally did it. After that first few hours of getting there, it was pretty fun. I do like how when we first got there, though, we had uh, Jeremy was already there ready for us. Uh, yeah. He started pulling everything out. and He had already all the equipment set up on a table neatly. And I was a lot more than I thought because he had told when he had pitched the idea to us, uh, he said, you know, we got some equipment. We got some drones and yeah. got some equipment we and some night all vision. We equipment together and yeah, I was expecting work with like, Jeremy. And yeah, I was expecting a, like a suitcase like a, the, he had just pulled out and you know we got a couple things and whoop de do no he had pulled two big tables out and everything like both tables were completely filled yeah. with everything and, and i'm sure you guys will see on the video as we're getting there it's all lined up jeremy's just hooking it up yep and it was so much equipment in a lot of batteries a lot of cords everything and he was just getting that prepped so when we, we showed about, up what three generators running not including the two small generators electric el want to say powered two or three we had on hand yeah about two or three it was, so it was about quite total a bit. about a five generators in total it was quite a bit power yeah and it was noisy once we got all that going but once we showed up and gotten everything prepped he gave us a rundown of what we wanted to do and i was <laughs> like this this is work this is proper and we wanted to get as much okay we got some actual stuff going on and with that first night with all that prep i mean we had a pretty good base camp going on we had our original base camp was sit uh it was about 250 yards i want to say maybe feet i don't know those numbers confused me but we were pretty close to homestead three which yeah. is what it was which 
we're right on right on the borderline of seeing it pretty much is through the trees and from there we decided okay we're going to set our base camp set up our tents and then we're going to set a perimeter camera and sensors um <clears throat> josh was nice enough to lend us some or brought up a good idea actually i should say uh lent us some knowledge that he had the idea of getting all these ghost equipments are a lot of them emotion sensor based right and yeah. I think that's what you're so, telling us so they're just real sensitive what, so essentially what they are they are cat toys or cat balls they're just little balls and they're essentially made to like pick up like small vibrations and mm -hmm. stuff like that and it would light up to get the yeah, cat's attention right yeah exactly okay. exactly it's and pretty so, rudimentary and i thought it was like you know what that's a, that's that's what we got to do because it's the same shit as the ghost adventures guys are using it's just you know <laughs> cheaper first of all <laughs> yeah. and you know he, he thought that so like what's well, set the perimeter so me and Josh went out and started setting up GoPros that we had a good perimeter around. And on the first night. On the first night that we'd got there. And uh, that's when Josh had brought up the cat balls. And I was like, that's a good idea. And then what should we do with it? So we thought that we should put them in the view of the cameras. Yeah. So but before we had went out and, and started putting those up, something was happening. With uh, No, that was the second night. Oh, was this yeah, that was the oh, second yeah, night. Oh, yeah, no, uh, you're getting too excited there for oh, me. Yeah, that, that was, was the like, night. oh, it's coming. The, the first night, there wasn't, a, there wasn't a whole bunch because it was, it was that prep night. And I think yeah, it was just because yeah, we were first we getting there. We weren't messing with them too yet. We hadn't sent out that uh, that vibe, I guess, or something. Or that other thing we'll talk about. Yeah, uh, but we, yeah, we had set up the camera, and you thought, you know, if we catch something, the, the cat ball will catch the attention of the light, so we'll be able to see something going right. on there. Because these cat ball lights like produce pretty bright lights, and then we're in the middle of nowhere, so it's like absolutely pitch black. Oh yeah, like the so the moon actually lit up the 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 uh, the, the camp like enough to where you can see. Uh, yeah. If you walk, your eyes the fire. had to adjust. But yeah, it was pretty dark, and so I was like, yeah, let's do that. So we set that up, and we get a good perimeter going, and. Uh, that first night, because we did get there a little bit later, and the prepping took a lot more than we thought. So we decided that we're gonna take some energy shots. That was uh, <laughs> yeah, really well, didn't help. We, we got the Costco box of that five-hour energy drink. Yeah, the knockoff one. <laughs> no, no, they were the five-hour energy it? drink. They were the Kirkland, but it was uh, a Kirkland uh, fucking uh, box. But we finished like half that box, dude. <laughs> so we just need to stay awake, man. And we were like, we're gonna stay up all night try to get that investigative ans aspect of yeah. you know it's three o'clock in the morning like yeah, some supposedly everything comes out at this hour yeah the we're witching up at hour. three out in the morning nothing <sighs> nothing and it was just so tired that we just decided to, you know we'll we'll get a, we'll get a little bit more investigation in the morning yeah. um, and as soon as we go to to the sleeping bags you know start hitting the hay that same night freaking we all start realizing how cold it really is it was too damn cold like dude i had first off I realized, and I didn't know this, but there's a such thing and difference as a summer tent and a winter tent. Yep, and uh, we were it was we were actually there on Halloween too, so it was yeah. it was the beginning of November. So in, it was cold in the desert, and it gets pretty cold in the desert at night. Believe it or not. Yeah. And how old did it get? The first night. The it was first like 18, night we woke 19? up. When we woke up, it got down to about. It was 15 degrees when we woke up, but it had gotten down to five, five degrees. Yeah. Like it was cold. It, everything had froze, yeah. and it was. It, and then my sleeping bags, which I had for Lent, everybody, mm -hmm. um, they were only meant to go in 40 degree weather. Yeah, so it was a little, little on the chilly side. But we got to, you know, get that aspect that we're out here in the, in the sticks with him so and not to mention my pillow froze i had a well, gel in like one of those memory foam pillows with a gel inside them yeah those like 80 dollar pillows froze it was like sleeping on a rock dude Holy well hell. well now you know next time because uh i know next time we got to bring a lot more sleeping equipment not <laughs> actual you know uh, and maybe some food. investigation equipment some, some food oh uh, well food. it didn't help that i flew so i couldn't really you know bring a lot but it wasn't a whole lot of prep either. I thought McDonald's would be good, but it was not. <laughs> Spent all my calories shivering, so I had to recount it. So we had to steal some of uh, his Vienna sausages. How many did you bring? You brought like Stop a whole. Stop calling it that. The Vienna. Oh, you're, oh yeah. Mm -hmm. The Vienna sausage. Oh, I see. No, <laughs> no, no, no. The other sausages, Josh. Oh, the ones in the cans. Mm -hmm. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> yeah, you brought a whole bunch, so I had to those, steal some of that. Those got 
if you guys have to go camping in a cold place, don't take Vienna sausages. Yeah, the weird water that they're in turns into a gel. Yeah. Like a blood clot. So that was that was <laughs> Why do you have to say it like a blood clot? Because that's what's going through my head, man. I'm sitting there and I'm like, oh man, I'm hungry as shit. Dude, I'm so hungry. Oh, you could have and used I'm watching any, just going down on some mini glizzies. Any and, like, glizzies. <laughs> just eating it, going ham, and then I watch something drip off of it. I'm like, I'm I'm good. I'm that. I'm good. I don't want to eat that. <laughs> so that went through my head. So and then once by the time we had like everybody had woken up, it was so fucking cold. Oh, we dude. didn't have we keep in mind we didn't have a bedroll either. So we we're sleeping in a summer rated tent that's basically winter. We didn't have a bedroll. We were sleeping on essentially the dirt. Yeah, but we were in sleeping bags. We that reason, didn't help. <laughs> yeah, we we kind of wanted to get the first time experience, so we were out there in sleeping bags. We had the campers, but it was mainly the other guys and Steph in there. Yeah, so we just decided, you know, we're 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 gonna man it out, tough it out. Maybe we'll hear something. So we didn't have a bedroll, so we kind of all the heat was sucked out. But yeah. we woke up. And oh, yeah, it was all I know what that we found. It was all I know that it was very, very cold, and we heard something going on. And the other people that we were camping with had woken up, so we just decided we we're gonna get up and start doing this stuff. So, yeah, we went but, to do an equipment check. Oh, we went to do an equipment check, and I think that was like because it gotten so cold, everything froze. Like, yeah, our EMF readers, our batteries, like. And it all had icicles covering it. The EMF reader is toast. It right. was it toast. Oh, it right wasn't there. the EMF reader. No, no, no. It was the AMF reader. It okay. was the yeah. It was what we used to the voice the com- box. Yeah, yeah. We to were trying to, to use that, and it was toast. Like, and that, I think that was the only like super loss that we took though. Yeah. Was that thankfully because we had a couple thousands of dollars equipment there and. We didn't expect to get that cold, and I'm glad that it was just that. Granted, it was only like forty bucks, but something yeah, but it, that, that night i don't even remember ch- changing into like sleep where i put my my what do you call it my uh, sweatpants over my pants i think i did the same thing and, and no, no. Climb, i put my freaking blanket in the sleeping bag i remember we had went oh uh, before i got there i got those hand warmers mm-hmm. and i like tossed like six of them in my sleeping bag yeah, and it was, I it was just rough. Right after, I was let's do this. I don't think it's we all like night. slept for, for. We didn't sleep much no, that night. No, we went to sleep around like three, four a.m. and woke up on when on sunrise. Right, when the sun rose. We woke up. Oh yeah, hundred percent. And then we decided, you know, we're gonna get warm, and we need food. So I need to get. We need food. I want some sausages. That's what I. I'm pretty sure that's what I said. I was like, I want. I don't want no Vienna sausage. I want some sausage. And so right. we. Uh, Packed up a little bit and then we went to town. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah that we was, went to town. That was interesting. It was, an, was it, it was a very interesting, very small town. Like, uh, it, it seemed like it would be a very tight knit, small community, but it was just way like, smaller we, than we imagined. It was like one of those small towns that you would see like on a TV series where it's like you walk and everybody's staring at you. Yeah, yeah pretty much. Yeah. Kind of like that, but like imagine like their main grocery store is on a corner of a four way stop. That's how I remember, right? Yeah, it's something like that. Yeah, it was, yeah. and there was like and two was cars, like, and they were employees. So, yeah. that's, and then on on the entry, of, like the entrance of it, they had like a like the paper system showing everyone that was banned from a reservation Mm because it was a native town Mm -hmm. so there's reservations so they were showing like who's banned from there yeah they're not allowed to be back very small town so very small and we needed we needed a potty break get some food so we grabbed some food and uh came back to camp now with our second day we had prepped a whole lot of investigations we wanted to do we wanted because we were uh, first night gave us a good uh, like grab like grip on it what we wanted to do a hundred percent because like I don't know if you noticed this, but me and Rod did, and I noticed it right at the beginning. The uh, did you know how quiet it was there? It was eerily quiet, right? Like, I I I don't know if you've gone hunting or yeah. camping a lot, but I I've gone hunting, camping, fishing. I've been out in the sticks quite a bit, and when the wind blows, you're gonna hear the brush, like, yeah, or like make some a sort sound. of whistle from like the rocks. The rocks or like you're gonna hear animals calling you hear birds chirping something it's not just gonna be dead silent and that's exactly how it was right it dead, was eerie silence dude and that i couldn't i couldn't wrap my head around that that one was and it wasn't uh a like a period of silence it was the entirety of the trip was just silent 
Yeah. So that was one thing that I did pick up that first night, but then the second day it really hit me because it was, all I can hear was a generator, and I was actually going to the bathroom because we had to walk quite a bit to the porta potty. Yeah, you had to walk like up the little hill. Yeah, right, the, up, right there. up that little hill incline area, and once you got farther away from the generators, it got just dead incline. silent. Yeah, because like, there's like kind of like a rock wall that covers the generator. Right yeah, around it. and I'm I'm like here, like I can feel the wind going, but I'm and I'm seeing like grass and shit move, but I nothing and we're sitting right next to a tree so that's that that was really really weird but isn't it, isn't, and that same day is when we sent up the drones. yeah that was the day that we started the investigation with the drones so we yeah. had a uh, that was dope that was that really was dope. pretty cool and uh as you saw we used that footage a lot on our trailers because that was dope footage <laughs> Hell yeah, um dude. we had that uh we had a couple drones out there and uh we had one it was similar to brad's it wasn't brad's but it no, was very no. similar yeah. Um, well, no, and then the mention on that after the first night everything was dying dude. yeah well, yeah and from that freeze that's the thing is i don't i it could be that freeze now now that you mentioned something because yeah. everything but it was only such a very minimal amount of ice it was like more of like the the dew in the morning frosted over right and saying that we only lost the one where it was completely fried uh, it, it could be maybe we were having some that's malfunctions. What I think it, honestly i think it was because of the cold like don't get me wrong like I'm not trying to be like, oh, I'm, like, I'm the skeptic of this, but it's just like, the, doesn't cold actually have an effect on battery life? Well, it would. Uh, it could shock the battery, but it would also, it's the water from melting, because it was only right. frosted for a oh, little right, bit. But does water on there remove battery life? Because wouldn't it just destroy it completely? I don't think the water does. And a lot of it's. Wouldn't so it just destroy it completely? The electrolytes in your water, that's what. Yeah. Um, that's uh, what. The, the, the electrolytes that's what they use that's what the electricity uses to uh navigate that's why the water is such a good conductor because it has a high uh, uh electrolyte count but like you can use mineral oil right so like with pcs everybody with their pcs they have mineral oil pcs that they literally su submerged all of the okay. components in this mineral oil it doesn't conduct electricity well so same thing with like isopropyl alcohol that doesn't conduct uh, electricity very well right. um so but with the water, it does. So it, in as long as it's not getting in between, like say two batteries, and water gets in between it, the arc or drain the battery, the water itself shouldn't affect it. The cold though will. So it'll affect battery life. Um, if you're going in something that's a hot environment, going into the cold, or vice versa, it's gonna shock the battery. Right. But it's not gonna. I don't think. I'm no expert, but I don't think it'll completely like toast it. But it was weird because we had that battery daddy. That's what the brand was called. I don't think I'm being weird. <laughs> yeah, it's a little fast for batteries. Um, don't worry, guys. It, basically, it's mm -hmm. all these batteries that would charge that are rechargeable batteries. So you have everything from AAA to D batteries. And, oh, yeah, that thing um, was cool. That thing, the case had frosted over. So I don't think any water had gotten into it, but I do. it did get cold. Not really so, cool. um, But those batteries, some of them were brand new. We had... Brand. All of them are brand new. They were, they were just bought off Amazon. They were Amazon Basics. They were, it was bought in that big old case. Right, remember? and then we had bought in a bunch of uh, like like side batteries that were yeah. pre-charged that couldn't be rechargeable. Mm -hmm. um, and it was really weird that we would take them out and they'd just be dead. Like, just completely not working. Um, then that was really crazy about the second day because that's when I noticed that our equipment was acting funny, I was like, okay, let's look at all look at it at a different point of view yeah. and i think i pretty sure i had i was like all right guys check your phone batteries because yeah. we had let them charge throughout the night was, um all of us had full batteries when we'd woken up because we had all left them charging in the camper yeah, by the time we had gotten to that point at that very moment checking all the equipment and other batteries my i think our phones were like what 70 percent ish because they varied like uh because yeah. mine's a definitely a shittier battery compared to your guys's phones and i was at 100 percent when we woke up I was at like 40, like yeah. maybe 60. You guys were like, a couple of you guys were at 70. Like it wasn't full. And obviously it's going to go down. We're using it. Well, but, yeah, but we're in the middle of nowhere where we had no internet. And that's what I also want to say, yeah, is that we had no internet. So we can't just sit there scrolling through TikTok. Yeah. Like we're going through our For You page. Like it. It, it was definitely a getaway. It was, <laughs> in the middle of nowhere. In one way, which I would say. <laughs> uh, it, and then we got away. So we couldn't use it. I didn't use my phone hardly ever, but he recorded for B-roll footage. No, at that time, we, used, we also used your phone to use that thermal projecting. Yeah, and that did drain it, but that was that later that night. But that was definitely worth it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 100%. Um, but and then we noticed that the batteries were dying, like, really fast. And the second night. The, and that was just a really... 
because it's not only is it brand new batteries that were coming out, and then at that point we noticed that okay, if these are going on, then the new sealed batteries we need to check that. Right. So we took a couple out and popped it into I think it was the EMF reader or some yep, thing that yep. took batteries and it was working just fine, no. full battery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So some of them were, but then you would take out like uh like a random one and it would that one wasn't working or both of them weren't working or something. So something messed with some kind of electronics over there. Now with that second day and the drones, okay, when we had the multiple drones, the one that we had sent out, the one that was the most what the fuck moment of the day, I feel, at least during the day. What is it with our drones dying, right? Yeah, like, it, 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 we had sent it over the Mesa. As soon as it, it didn't reach right over the Mesa, and as soon as it hit, it auto-returned. Yeah, auto well that we had that hit that block. It did that a couple times where it lost battery. connection or low battery and it started returning back to where the controller set. Because uh, mm -hmm. we had one that was a controller that you would just you know watch it as it goes and you know fly it. And then we had that fancier one that was a the headset. first person view. Yeah, that first person you're looking through the eyes of the drone, and that one was the big beefy one, the mm -hmm. expensive one that uh, Jeremy had uses for his job where he. Uh, uses lidar to you know survey yeah. so you know luckily it had that function he has the sensors that bounce off the ground right the cool one, the cool one. and uh it would coming back and then remember uh jeremy saying something like hey i just changed his battery it's dead like, yeah what the hell okay throw bring it back he brought it back we'd switch the batteries threw it on the charger because I, I remember watching that happen. We threw it on the charger. We did it like two or three times. Didn't yeah, we? threw it on the charger and it sent it another one fully bad. Took it off, put it on the charger, took it off the charger, put it in the drone, sent it out. And that second time, it had said, I think it was at 97% when it hit. Yeah, right when we threw it in. Right, something like it. It was pretty basically full charge. And then all of a sudden, Jeremy's like, oh, I lost connection. I don't, I, I don't have connection to the drone. And we're freaking out because that's a five thousand dollar drone, oh, yeah. and it's now over somewhere we have no access to. We have, we can't get over there, and that was a very stressful moment. I thought Ooh. I worried for Jeremy. And, <laughs> then, and, then, and then we look in the sky, and it's auto returning. We're just like, oh, thank God. But that one, it wasn't auto returning. No, it, was that it, one? That, not one, the one that, that was, was the one that we were worried that we were gonna have to go like jump fences and like. Have to Is go that the one that we sent with the flare yep. over? The, the, with the orange flare yeah. over that we put on the trailer? Yeah, yeah, and he was getting, I think it was over by that ritual area. Yeah, oh, it, by the, yeah. the medicine circle. Yeah, the medicine circle area. We, he was trying to serve it and get a, get a, a good 3D scan of it. And it was, um, he said that he lost connection. And like at that point, like I'm expecting the drone to go down or something. Like, because he was like, it should be auto returning, but it's not. Mm -hmm. And it's not on the auto return, so it's just standing there, floating. We're freaking out at this point. And so we're prepping up the side-by-sides and getting everything ready to go out so we can go recover this thing. And then it finally just decided to connect again. And he, I think he might have rebooted it yeah. or did something, but he wasn't talking to us. He just ran off and started doing yeah, his own thing. he was thing. just doing his tech thing. Fully understand. That was basically his career right there. And... um then he, it's, I think he did get it back, but it didn't auto return. He had to manually fly it back, but the battery was like at 20%. So it went from 97 to 20%, and it was out there three, three minutes, minutes, three yeah, minutes tops. That. He wasn't out there very long. And that flare was just sitting there going. Mm -hmm. and so we could see it in the air just spewing mm -hmm. fumes out. And it was, <laughs> with that one, it's weird that it hit that certain point and yeah. it would either auto return or the battery would die. And that was not only the one drone, but the other drone that was manually, the, the battery would just die once it hit that certain block. So that was definitely weird that second day because electronics aren't supposed to fail like that. Like, yeah, how, how often do you use your phone? How, what does your phone last on the day? Like, Normally by the time I get home, it's maybe hit 40%. And you're using it all day? Well, I also take phone calls a lot throughout the day. Right. Like I have to call, like, I work for apartment maintenance, so I have to call people like about the issues they're having with their apartments i have to contact vendors for bigger problems that i can't like handle so it just depends on the severity of the day but roughly about 40 percent right so he uses quite a bit and it was just we weren't even using it and it was draining it that that, yeah. that i can't answer that that's so weird yeah there's it no was, real because we weren't making phone calls because we had our radios out there right and those have a six mile radius right 
supposed six miles. I really so doesn't believe so. Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to chalk it up as maybe five. But mm-hmm. yeah, we had, we had some form of communication. And it was just really weird. So then we had finished up that, let everything charge. And I think that was when our tour was ready. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. Um, so we actually. What was the tour? Like, what did we tour? So we had actually went to a, a closer vantage point to um, the actual like Homestead Two, Homestead One yeah. on Skinwalker Ranch. A lot property. of them were like overhead views, or like because where we were surveying them from, as some would say, mm-hmm. was from a higher altitude. Mm-hmm. So you know, Cold Obi Wan, you got to get the high ground, man. Like yeah. we we were up there. Of course, we want to get that aerial view. Yeah, and then it was also over by that ritual area because yes. we actually had access to that area where we were flying the drone, um, just uh, farther, a little bit uh, down the road from where it disconnected, and we had gotten we had gotten a nice tour over there and. There's a lot of speculation, um, and y- you viewers can go and look. And I believe in the Skinwalker Ranch show, they had barely brushed the topic because they don't have access to that actual land. But we did. We had access to that. We right. could walk up on it. Yeah, and, and do was everything. It, wasn't the the tour guide saying something about how she actually had some clashes with them? Yeah, the clashes with uh, the people who own Skinwalker Ranch. Yeah, yeah and who about were that. Documenting. They're, I forgot who was the. Uh, I don't know. Was, I'm, was one of the shows, known? I want to say, or it was the property owner. They're basically. Was, I believe it was one of the shows because they were trying to go on film and trying to investigate. Mm-hmm. But we'll leave that name unknown. For yeah, me. but I think they were fighting over like property lines. Like, yeah, you know, this is were, mine. No, this is mine. Yeah, and, but it turns out it was actually hers, and she fenced it off. And kind of glad she did because of how she was explaining some of the stuff. Is I think some of the stuff should be left alone because, like, I, I'm native. And I believe a lot of the stuff should be left alone. Yes, it should be studied and, like, I guess you should say, like, honored. <laughs> but I feel like there's a certain extent between, like, honoring and studying it. And, and invading and disrespecting, yeah. right? No, I agree. And that was the one thing she did warn us about is we don't want to disrespect their land. Yeah. And it's we went into that mindset of okay that we're we're here we're visitors you know we're you know we're not gonna litter we're not gonna yeah. sit here and fucking dig we're not gonna disrespect no. like she actually had did some research saying that there because there was a path it was like a giant mound that had like a almost like a what was it like a fire pit on top and it had like some seats around it and whatnot. right and then really big boulders yeah, like that were says, with that though on that so and you see on the footage we had there was a circle of boulders yeah. and they were the same boulders that were across the, not across the valley but across from where we were yeah. that were uh, like almost like they looked like they were runoff or like fallen rocks from the cliff side but they were the same boulders same color oh, same yeah. like l- they looked the same and no it definitely looked like that because when we were when we were going to and from areas mm-hmm. I noticed that on the drives that uh, there was boulders that kind of look specifically placed Mm -hmm. but there was no drag marks right there's no drag marks in but they matched the same ones from that were on the other side that were yeah but (sighs) probably a mile down the road probably about a quarter mile down the road like that's quite a distance and there's no tracks there's no dig marks there's no equipment marks on the rocks itself which you think you know there would be something if that was the case but i think that some i think those rocks were from there um but well, didn't she do some like cool research on you know, like medicine medicine circle that if you walked one way around the circle it was like faith the other way was like medicine or something like that i believe it was something along the lines she was explaining that what her, the lady who owned the property researched did um something that they believed that uh that it was a like a medicine circle that's why we name it the medicine circle because they did what well, either a ritual or some kind of tribal something over there at least the natives did on with that land um do i believe it i can't say that i do but it's i'm not gonna say you're being like oh dude i'm native i felt that i felt that because this is not like that it definitely felt different like when i did step in there though i i I almost felt like i was stepping in a church you know it yeah almost that like wouldn't say holy feeling but like sacred feeling like this yeah. is a safe space almost feeling like i kind of feel that yeah it it definitely felt different yeah. and along with that it was eerily quiet over there but like the wind was a little bit more i'd say it was definitely windier uh but it was a nice area but we were was, also right down like kind of like a valley right um and right down the valley and uh on the top of uh it's 
it's a dike is what it's called at the top of a mountain like it goes into like a ditch basically so we're at the top of the dike in uh cl dike cliffside and uh looking through and the circle was right here and then farther down was homestead two homestead one and then base camp was two miles maybe down the yeah, road we quite traveled a bit quite a bit with those side -by -sides. oh yeah quite a bit with the side by sides and uh it was it, it was a nice little area and different from our base camp so we're getting yeah. different analysis we had popped out the emf reader for sure because we're like okay if we're gonna get something we're gonna get something here uh, i believe we were running at a basis point zero three or something like that just about everywhere we went so it was pretty steady well one weird thing though is when we noticed when we were up there at the medicine uh circle was that the emf reader uh would go it wouldn't spike dramatically but it would spike up a little bit when you were uh, by that fire pit area, I would yeah, say. Up, but we didn't really climb it because. Well, we didn't climb it. They didn't want us to walk on it. Yeah, because um, there was steps where that they were like sinking in, and it was like basically disintegrating, and it was deteriorating. Yeah, we didn't want to, you know, destroy anything while we were there, and uh, so we didn't step up. But we can take it, and point it up, and it would start going up. Remember yeah, that? No, I remember that because also when we were leaving, we were getting ready to leave. We, we did like a little prayer or something didn't we uh i think yeah, yeah. we did uh and, a right uh prayer but like just i wouldn't say it was a prayer but we just like let respecting, whoever, a respecting like respecting hey guys talk yeah what we did we had said that um we'd gather around a circle we're like hey you know we're here on your land thank you for letting us be here uh just respectful like we didn't mean any harm we're just here you know we're curious and uh with that though it was i don't right after the little talk i guess you can say we had with the undead that's when the emf reader when we were heading back to the side by sides it was, we were about yeah. to get another shot right there we were setting it up remember yeah because that's when jeremy was putting his drone away mm -hmm. and this emf reader just started going off mm -hmm. it, it did it started ringing off a little bit like it spiked up a little bit and then we're like okay this is different and then it went down i think it had baseline then we continued on with the tour uh and then later after everything had wrapped up that night bro stuff was going down stuff was going down i was there i know and i'm telling you stuff was going down you should know you should I'm know this i slept right next to you and brandon it was going <laughs> down it was going down uh we uh by the time we showed up the sun was going down so we we're like okay we're okay. gonna prep this for this night investigation we're gonna get all of our cameras ready we're gonna get all make sure our batteries are good our sd cards are good and yeah, uh yeah. We had also gotten our night vision cameras ready. I think ready. we had two hours till complete dark. Yeah. It, so we had time to We had just everything. a little bit of wiggle room. And that's when I think uh, LT had uh, brought out the um, like military-grade night vision. We had also brought out the night vision cameras, um, all of that. And the infrareds, too. Yeah, the infrared. That infrared was badass. That's, yeah. I got the to use that The way you got to it up to your phone, I was like, that's that, cool. Well, that one and then the, the scope that we had was yeah, a badass one, too. I got too. to play with the scope a lot. Yeah, for a little side note, the, with that one... It, it was weird because you're looking it's pitch black outside and you see everything but it switches everything and it's not like in the movies where everything's green it was white not even white it was color like it had a color option yeah. where it was showing and it looked like, literally looked like you're looking at it yeah. and it was daytime it was just easier crazy. to see in the white though. so crazy but yeah the color was great um was really great. so we busted those out and we're like we're gonna use these we're gonna need these we're gonna uh uh set up some more cat balls and then we also set up this little tool i can mispronounce it every time it was ramrod rimrod what is what is Rampod. it ram pod ram um which it's basically what that uh cat balls were doing but more specifically it, designed yeah. it, but it's a lot more sensitive it has like a little antenna in the middle and it's supposed to pick up like the frequencies mm -hmm. and on this one they're more adjustable so you can set it to be more sensitive so in a sense it should cover a broader range right and uh, we, I think, when we tested it out, we'd uh, when we bought it, we'd be like, okay, what, what, what is this gonna detect? Cause, like, is it right. gonna detect if I send a text message? Is it gonna detect if I touch it? Like, what? So we had set up a like a little perimeter, and we we're like, okay, we're gonna go as close as the antenna as we can. Once you got closer, different lights would pop up. Mm -hmm. So it would go like, once you got a good distance, it would be like green, and then it would go like, yeah. uh, I think it was like an orange color, and then we went through. But you, it would still detect you moving, but also you just standing there. So I think it was detecting some kind of electrical signal. No. It had to have with that antenna. And so we're like, yeah, that's perfect. We're going to set that up. And uh, 
we were, I think me and you were filming B-roll or something. We were out, out and about and Steph was out back at camp and she notices that this, that it's going off. I'm like, shit, what the fuck? Oh yeah. So and we started rushing back. Yeah. We started rushing back and we started watching it and we had got some footage of it where it's not doing any lights. Then it was a steady green light. Yeah, it stayed put for like a solid, what, two, three seconds? Yeah, solid three, two or three seconds, and it would go out, but then it would start flashing, and then it would go solid again. And we're like, that's weird. We've never seen it do that before. Yeah, because it was like somebody was like toying with just that light, because with how sensitive this rampart is, it's like any like sort of movement, all these lights would flicker, because mm-hmm. like it's just so sensitive, and you don't even got to be touching the little antenna in the middle. Mm-hmm. It's hard to understand, hard to explain, yeah. They had a we, good perimeter to it. We could probably do a, like a little explanation video on it. Well, so. We definitely could to but, to get the diagnostic. Yeah, so basically of it, you got the little rampart, little thing sticking up right here, right over here. Hold on. So with this one, so you got the antenna, you'd come close and here we can turn it on like this. So this is the rampart. Turn it on like that, and so as you move closer to it, it was almost like that. Yeah. And but we had it on a way sensitive setting. But with this one, it would, yeah. So it, yeah, it was like this. We had it on the most highest setting, and like as you see. Yep, and that's basically exactly what it was doing. And we completely moved everything away from it, just so we can make sure that this wasn't doing it. And uh, just because I was concerned that like maybe there's interference, um, yeah, yeah. and Steph had noticed it, so we wanted to make sure. Sh- that's actually one of the ones sounds yeah. that it was doing. Um, believe it or not, was, was that high pitched, mm-hmm. yeah, that high pitched, and it was flashing that purple light. Um, once, and it was going crazy. It flashed the purple light. We hadn't seen the purple light yet, right? Yeah, and we're like, whoa, what? Yeah, the we're, purple light threw us all off. We were like, just like, that's a new one. That's a new one. What the hell? And we're like, okay, and we just kept watching it. So we decided to take some more of your cat balls and set a good perimeter around it. Oh yeah, with the GoPros, right? We were setting them up. Yeah, so that way, if there is anything, you know, reaching, it yeah, would catch it. That's when that's when we were going with the freaking night vision and all that, and um, freaking we got spooked by that fucking raccoon, dude. Right, and I well, I'm chopping it up as a raccoon because it was right after we'd gotten that ram prod situation. We decided, you know, what we're gonna go see if there's anything yeah. out here, and we were recording. B-roll footage because we were on our way to check the GoPro that me and you had set up the night before. Honestly, I'm being honest, going up to those things, before I'm only agreeing that it was a damn raccoon because I don't know what it was. (laughs) But I'll tell you what, as soon as I heard the grass rustling and I was the lucky dude to hold the camera and the flashlight as you two were just (laughs) walking there commentating everything. Don't get me wrong, I'm I'm here to support the team, y'all. But holy hell, you're lucky I didn't drop the camera and just start fucking booking it. <laughs> I mean, shit, I would have if it was any other standpoint, but I was like, nah, we need to catch this shit on camera. Yeah, so, um, yeah, he just kept going. I was just like, dude, like, we just need to go. Yeah, so we basically we had, we had heard something, and we started walking towards the direction, and it, it sounded like a commotion of some sort. And it throughout did. this whole time, it was just completely silent, so we had to... Um, like really like uh, gauge where it was coming from and so we started walking over there and when it was coming that way from over there we uh it busts out the camera straight straight hit recorded because i was like we need to hit the shit hit the camera um because it started getting a little bit louder and i couldn't quite understand what it was but then i i could once we got a little bit over the hill i could hear it and it was about 100 feet or so, but it's pitch black out, so I can't see it. Yeah. And I can hear something chittering and screaming like it's getting attacked, like it's getting yeah. mauled. And I'm like, what the fuck? And I had, because I remember you, yeah, I think we were you were talking there. or Rod was talking, and I had straight up had to shush your ass because I was yeah. like, stop talking, I need to listen. And I was listening to it, and it sounded like a, it was chittering like a raccoon. Like, mm-hmm. um, and how I got that you know thesis is uh we well, as a i can i hunt coyotes a lot right so we um use a mojo and with the mojo it's a like a decoy that uh like gets their attention but then you have a speaker off to the side that uh calls out calls so it can so you don't have to manually do it yeah. so it can be any of the preset ones so like whether it be a snowshoe hare 
screaming or a baby cougar screaming, right? There was a raccoon setting that I would use, and it sounded exactly like that. Like, the chittering, the screaming, the screeching. So I was like, raccoon, that's what connected in my dots right there. And and we're sitting there talking about what what could what could this be? What like like I think you had said it was dogs. It might be. Or I thought you it rot? was dogs because and I I had kind of heard like the growl, but I knew. What was, dog name? Uh, I Allie? can't remember. Allie, yeah. Yeah, I knew Allie was in the is in the car because it was already getting pretty cold and her skin was getting sensitive. Right. And then I knew, and the other dog what was his name Hunter. I don't remember the name of the, it, but it was in... It was that black freaking Siberian Husky. It was the Lycan Shepherd, yeah. Lycan Shepherd, oh my god, that thing was scary, dude. Um, But I, that was... Yeah, and they were I all, think but, he was in the RV yeah, at that Yeah, yeah, they were all like... So we were just walking around, we were just like, what's going on, dude? And uh, I had immediately, I was like, no, it's not dogs, because... Like, because we were worried about, you know, res dogs out there because they're basically just stray dogs, that yeah. wild dogs that are out there. there's reservations out there, so they have dogs that just hang on the reservations. And, and they're basically just wild dogs. So they and, call them res dogs. And uh, I was like, it's not res dogs because they'd be barking. Yeah. And same thing with coyotes because there's the desert coyotes out there. They yip. They yip. They're going to bark between the the, uh, the the pack to communicate. Right. And I'm not, we weren't hearing any barking. At least I wasn't. I, was, I thought I heard, like, again, growling. I, I didn't quite hear that. And we were quite a bit difference between each other in the yeah, distance. We, were, so we had, like, a good, what, 30, 40 yards? 30, 40 yards, something like that. Because I, I started running up the hill, basically. Yeah, because you were, because you were, we were moving up the hill that way, like, towards the camera. And I remember... You kind of worked your way off towards the right, going up diagonally. Mm-hmm. And I remember I went up straight. Right, yep. Yeah. And that, and we had met up at the top of that mesa, and that's yeah. when we started started hearing it yeah. uh, more distinctly. Yeah, no, it. And I, I knew it couldn't have been dogs. It couldn't have been dogs because we would hear something. Yeah. And then it started getting a little bit quieter, but it's still screaming, top of its yeah, lungs. Yeah, no, I remember that. And it started getting quieter and quieter, and it just disappeared, almost like it sounded like it was being drug off or something. Mm-hmm. I don't. I. I don't know what that was because it, it something was getting attacked. No, no, no. And that something I believe is a raccoon. What was attacking it? I don't know. But it was something that was quiet and it had to have been on its own because there was no communication. And I don't think we had the thermal. On this no, we did try to bust out the thermal. Uh, the oh no, we didn't. We didn't have it on that point because yeah, it was, I was about just because we we were. I remember being kind of upset. At that we tried that. getting the drones out was the one yeah. thing. Uh, but the, the problem was with the drone that Bad we did things. have that had night vision capability, we didn't have access to fly it at night, which right. that was the big ordeal. Was we, you had Because it had lights on it. it had, yeah. uh, we had to communicate. You had to register it in order to fly it. Yeah, something like that. And we didn't was. have a, a go-ahead to fly it at night, so we couldn't get the thermal on it. <sighs> I really wish we would have because we could have at least gotten some idea of what was going on over there but um that that second night was crazy because it was right after we went on this tour right after we were on supposed sacred sacred land and then we're getting our electronics going off we're getting batteries dying we're getting noises we we had that floating light we did have that floating night that floating light huh that we were shining the laser at oh yeah we had noticed that when we were we came back it was after that we had noticed that the Ramrod wasn't going off anymore, so we. Yeah. I think we were. And then prepping. we had looked above the mist, and then we had that floating light, so we killed. It all wasn't the power. Jeremy; it was LT's brother who noticed it. Yeah, you're right. So we killed the power, so we could use the night vision goggles. That's yep. when LT brought out his military grade ones. I could see, but we needed to kill the power because I couldn't see that. Mm, yeah, no, I do remember that. And yeah, that was when we did. But we, I know yeah, we yeah. busted out the night and vision. And that's when we got the laser, and, and we couldn't see that far right, with, the with the one we area, had. And then we posted the video about that. Everyone was talking about how the laser or how. Everyone Everyone was talking about that little white line going across, but nobody cared about the lasers. Right, and we debunked that. Right, and nobody. Uh, I, I was going to actually bring that up to you. Is that we're talking to people when they saw that video? They're like, "What's that white line in the middle?" Yeah, we didn't notice that at first, but we we kind of looked into it some more. Yeah, it was like what like uh, something. What I'm trying to get you to see. What the hell? Yeah, but we and looked into it a little. It turns out it was just a reflection of the laser. Well, the, the laser was reflecting off of the mesa, yeah. but that white line you can see in the video, 
um, was actually reflecting. It was the mesa itself reflecting. Yeah. Um, granted, there's not a lot of light out there. The only bit of light was the moon, so it's reflecting the moonlight. So it's pretty reflective. I think we yeah. debunked that because you can we compared side by side photos, mm -hmm. daytime versus nighttime versus the uh, yeah. the fit of the sorry the video of what we saw, and they all had the same outline. So conducted it was the same mesa mm -hmm. and but it's just reflecting in that night vision is able to capture that light uh more because it's opening up that aperture right. and just bouncing off and catching that light that's being reflected as far as that light i the one that was floating above the mesa right that the that one that we're one trying to get crazy. them to see was and, and it didn't it started bouncing almost oh yeah once we started shining that uh laser at it. yeah that laser i wanted to talk about that that was some crazy laser we had it was a blue laser never seen yeah. that ever. military grade on Mil amazon military grade but you know like that just bucks. doesn't mean anything really but it was it mean probably blind someone <laughs> it, that's actually they warned it like don't shine this in your eyes you're gonna burn it like he uh, actually even showed us it'll, it'll burn paper if you put it to your towards yeah, it you hold it there long enough and it was just pinging right off that mesa and it was that was a cool experiment um but i just think that there's some of these lights that they're seeing that these were uh locals are reporting or you know even what they breached on the uh um skinwalker ranch show the right. these supposed stop uh, spotlights they're seeing in the sky i think it could be you know someone hunting honestly and they're shining a spotlight and it's bouncing off the mesa and they're on the other side of the mesa seeing these the effect of the ref, uh, reflection and that's could be what they're seeing the, that could be one theory on it i just think that with that mesa there's a lot of reflection in stuff going on that can alter lights but so there's something i want to pick about that but there was a lot more to it than just that i feel like there's too much of i guess you would consider a coincidence phenomena i guess you would say but for someone to be on the other side of where we barely had access to mm -hmm. to be shining lights this way and to be creating some sort of effect to that will create on us to believe it is not human made I believe that's highly unlikely. I think it, it could, the way be. that light was bouncing in midair and not really having, like, I guess, a beam source come from, I just don't see it feasible. I mean, and it, I don't know. Yeah, I'm not sure. And especially, like, how bright it was. Yeah. That was, that was the big thing. Because it, it seemed it, almost like a light bulb. Yeah, kind of. And it was just bouncing up and down. Yeah. Um, th with, I, I, I'm going to chalk it up. It had to have been something to do with that healing circle or whatever we want to call it because it was know. right after that and then we got in after that we decided that we're gonna you know record a little bit more we got our uh gopros going to see uh of a time lapse of you know if there's any movement going um so we decided that we're good on footage for the night so i believe that was when we decided you know we're gonna camp out the correct way yeah. Jeremy was nice of us to let us use the uh, the space oh, that heater. Second night. That was that was great because I was actually warm enough to sleep. It and was great. Yeah, that night it dropped down to what was it? That was the cold night for us. That was the coldest it had, night. When we woke up, it was five degrees. It yeah. was cold. It, it dropped down to the negatives that night. Oh my god, dude! And, uh, Jeremy lent us a space heater. And it was a nice space heater Very that I'm nice gonna have space to buy. Heater. And let me tell you, it heated some space. Yeah, it and. Heated, uh, it, Raiden was really fucking warm, dude. Oh, he was really fucking oh, warm. Oh, yeah. Fucking, and we're, we're there laying in the middle. We're just, we're all there chilling, right? We just get into the, the tent. Lights are still on. And I'm falling asleep because I'm so cold. It's hard to keep my eyes open, honestly. But it's, you know how like, you get like tired, but yeah, when you lay down and you're shivering and then it's hard to fall asleep. Mm -hmm. I'm finally about to fall asleep. Y'all are still talking. And all of a sudden, as you're, Brayden's sleeping bag is on fire. Mm -hmm what <laughs> i like hopped up i was like what are you fucking serious and freaking Bra braided sleeping bag was touching the space heater and it was burning through the sleep you could see his fucking foot dude i don't know <laughs> how we didn't just boof right right in, right no in the and flame, then braided's dude. there just chilling he's like what what no, a i'm fine <laughs> leave me alone and i was like no get out of your sleeping bag you might catch fire. He's all zipped up. He's like, I'm comfy. Yeah, that was, that was a fun night. And then we went to sleep, and we had uh, got a little, little, little piggy that night. And I think we decided to eat the rest of our rations because we're like, 
fucking I'm hungry, man. Oh, yeah. And we had trash everywhere, and we were just half asleep with, like, fucking, like, crumbs all over us. Just <laughs> warm, nice. It was great. It was, it was great that second night. And then I think at some point, I think it had a safety feature on it where it would just turn off. So in the what? middle of the night, it hit the it hit space heater. Oh, yeah. And it, so it had turned off. And by the time we'd woke up, like I said, it was like five degrees that third day. And I think I was one of the first ones to wake up, but I wasn't, like, getting up. I was just sitting there just fucking staring off, going, like, I'm fucking cold. Fuck this, dude. Oh, my God. <laughs> when, when is everybody else going to wake up so I don't have to be the weirdo that gets up first? And, um... And then freaking was it? They announced breakfast. No, it wasn't. It wasn't that. That was the. That was the. the I believe the second day. Yeah, but it was, was the, the second day. Because that was the day. only. That, the first day we didn't have food. Second day we oh, did. Oh yeah. No. So the second day you were already awake, but I had heard like. Like, come get food or breakfast. Something about no, food. No, you had ran the fuck out, though, yeah. because... Uh, Someone it, said something about food. I was so cold. I was like, warm food, sign me up. <laughs> Steph had woken up, and... Because uh, she had... I swear she heard something outside the tent. Yeah. And uh, we were like, what? There ain't shit there. And then Rod was half awake on, what? What?
exactly of I UFOs think, visiting there? You think it's a supernatural? I can't say we got anything particular, but I definitely can say for certain we got some on our hands that need some more investigating. Only because I feel like if it were either like a like a native thing, like we researched so heavily about and talked about, because like that's the standpoint I've been on since the beginning before we went on this skinwalker trip was i'm native so i believe with this whole native curse possibly being the backstory i believe that just could be it but then you know these aliens are being involved our batteries are going out of nowhere ghosts aren't really known for messing with technology i don't think and so i I, I think that it could be it's something. Something. There's up. definitely. I'm not going to chalk what's, it up as what's nothing. Your, what's your take on it? Like, do you think it's the? I want to look at it. I want to believe that there's something going on there. I want to believe that there's an alien mothership hidden in the rocks. If I'm being honest with you, but I gotta look at it at a reality standpoint and looking at the numbers and looking at all of the stuff that stories I was told in the encounters. I believe that there's something going on there. I can't say what it is. I can't say that it's aliens. I can't say that it's ghosts. I can't say that it's the paranormal sorts. But I can say that there's an anomaly up there that is affecting whether it's radio waves or uh, uh, electronics. And it could be a solar flare, flare of some sort or just a solar hot spot. Right. Maybe that's just where the moon's reflecting. Right, where the sun, or leaving just a weak area in the ozone, something. Uh, I think we need more tools to, you know, get those answers, but I, we definitely need to go back and uh, understand, because there's something going on there. I'm not going to say that it's, it's just a regular old fucking desert. There's nothing going on here, because there's something. Right. Um, is, uh, I want to talk about how we ended that episode, though, how we were, what we left LT behind. <laughs> No, that was that was pretty hilarious. Sorry, we didn't, we we, the old man took to. forever. His dementia was kicking in or something. We're something. trying to wait for him to hit his lions. And he's just, we're just like, all right, bye. And he's like, all right, I'll just he did his own stay thing. Stay weird, whatever. He bye. eventually came back. Yeah, <laughs> he eventually made his found the car. Yeah, he used all of his survival skills, you know. But he, he made <laughs> his it back. Walking cane and his. Well, yeah, that was that was Skinwalker. Uh, I'm thinking that we're gonna have to his go back and we're gonna we're gonna find something. I think so because we came close. Oh, definitely. Now, with that being said, I think this is a good way to end our uh, our investigative series. Uh, Most definitely. We're going to have to get a couple more interviews with a couple more people, you know, that were there. Get a get a few uh, good standpoint of the timeline of, so you guys understand a little bit more of a deep, more deeper dive into the information about what was going on. Because you can only see so much with the, what was out, so want to give you more information because you got some questions i know you guys got some questions go ahead and drop whatever questions you have down in the comments down in the We're comments excited to answer them and just honestly interact with you guys yep. you know and give then, us give us something to talk about yeah we and you can drop those comments audience. on you know youtube facebook TikTok, anything you really search, you know, we're we're on there. Uh, the one good recommendation I've noticed i've been told to is uh we're podcasts really good on uh for spotify or apple music you know, pop it on, listen to music while you're working. It's pretty, or listen to the what we're talking about as we're working. Got quite a bit of season. We got all of season one on there, so it's out there. Season two is getting ready to be out there as well. So stay tuned and remember, things are gonna get a little weird. Yes, sir. Keep like and subscribe and share, guys. I don't know how long that was. <coughs> I know, I can smell it from here. No, I would not. No, no, no. Yeah, I smelled some right, right when you pulled your fucking pants down. Oh, it's coming out, dude. <laughs>